out if you if you want to leave your programs on your chair and save them whatever you want to do we can do that thank you guys thanks yep you will It's a nice fire. I don't care. Whatever you're doing, then we'll help you light things up. Okay, Chloe, why don't you hand your candle off there and you can come and hold this book for me. Thank you very much. That way. Okay. You want, you want burgundy in here? That seems great. Remind me to turn my mic on. Do you go in the first or the final? Let me see that. Who knows? Keep this thing in there. Maybe right there so I don't get you close to the fire. Okay. I don't want to burn you up. Why don't want you burn you up? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church, church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, 
and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we prepare the candle today, Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to Him and all ages to Him be glory and power through Christ our Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> If you'd please make way and follow us in when we get in. And may the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
the light of Christ. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad. Let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, Arrayed with the lightning of his glory, let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is 
is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which was slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. Why is this night different from all other nights? This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. Why is this night different from all other nights? This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Why is this night different from all other nights? The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners. Why is this When things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the works of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Why is this night different from all other nights? Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere, un persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star 
the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to extinguish your candles and to be seated at this time. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Let there be lights in the dome of the sky 
to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, be fertile multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make humans in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created humans in his image. In the image of God they were created. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken.
The word of the Lord. Fear 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on the top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son, but the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh, hence people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars in the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All of this because you obeyed my command the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace in which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From the book of Exodus, the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two. The Israelites may pass through it on dry land, but I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. Sing a song of freedom. Sing a song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also leaving the front took up its place behind them. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel, but the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Sing a song of freedom. Sing a song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. A song of freedom. Sing a song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. 
In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast the column of fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force, a glance that threw it into a panic. He so clogged the chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. For sand chariots are cast into the sea. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them in to its midst. Sing a song of freedom. Sing a song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. For sand chariots are cast into the sea. Wars and chariots are cast into the sea. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown them against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. A song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot. Horse and into the sea. Horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Horse 
Horse and chariot, horse and chariot, hate and prejudice, hate and prejudice, chains and slavery, chains and slavery, horse and chariots are cast into the sea. Horse and chariots are cast into The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations, obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith, may be reborn by partaking of your spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not. And nations that knew you not shall not run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as the heavens, from the heavens, the rain and the snow come down and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. We shall draw water joyfully, 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveil the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people. For only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and their deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name. Because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Lord, cleanse my heart, make me new, make me new. Make me new. Lord, cleanse my heart. Make me new. Make me new. Lord, cleanse my heart. Make me new. Therefore, Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. Lord, cleanse my heart, make me new, make me new. Lord, cleanse my heart, make me new. take you away from among the nations, gather you from all foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you 
and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Lord, cleanse my heart, make me new, make me new. Lord, cleanse my heart, make me new. the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they come into being 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to stand as we sing together the Gloria. Let us pray. O oh God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that you were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into the union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. 
for a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There will you, you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Good evening, everyone. Good to see you. I just want to begin by saying thank you. Thank you for your presence here tonight. It, you know, for some reason tonight, it's really hitting me deeply that it's good to be home. And really, I think most of us tonight could admit that this is our home, that, that as those readings were taking place, I could imagine myself sitting around my own kitchen table growing up as a kid sharing our history, sharing our stories. You know, my grandpa or my uncles telling stories about when they were kids, about telling stories about their uncles and aunts and their grandparents. And, you know, many times those stories were fascinating and full of life and we would laugh and smile. Other times the stories were kind of serious and they were kind of painful. And yet we were willing to sit there and, and, and share those stories and, and just allow ourselves to be the people who we are, the people we are created to be. And tonight, as we hear our story, I think that's what's so important about this night, that it's our story, that it's about our family that is gathered here tonight. This is our history. This is who we are as a people of faith, a God that we celebrate, a God who has risen from the dead. A God who is very intimate with us and continues to be intimate with us. A God who is alive. A God tonight, and it's been clear to me these last, probably this last nine, ten months in my life, that when we come and celebrate tonight, it's not just life and death that we celebrate. It's life and death and life that we celebrate. And try to wrap our heads around that. I mean... To be loved like that, to be given that kind of gift, to know that there is more, so much more, and yet as a people of faith gathered in our home tonight, we experience and we encounter the person of Jesus Christ, not just out there somewhere, not floating around out there somewhere, but a Lord that's right here with us. A Lord that is present in the Word, the Word of God that is alive, present in the people, present in the Eucharist, present in the priest. We celebrate life today. We celebrate hope. You know, I got one of the most amazing phone calls that I have ever had in my life. I was, somebody called me and said, you've won $10 million. <laughs> I said, you got to be kidding me. And then I figured out I was talking to a computer or something. But anyway, you know, and, and the reason I bring that up tonight is because, you know, when we try to prepare, when we come to a place like this, I know that even as a priest, and, and it seems like it during the Triduum or during Holy Week, that those things that kind of pull at you, those distractions, they seem to get stronger during Holy Week for some reason, that idea of being distracted. And yet I was able to see through that. I know I didn't win $10 million. I was able to see through that. But again, you know, look at those distractions, and yet with the beautiful music and the proclamation of the word and the people gathered here tonight, and even the sense of, of being able to hold a candle and turn the lights off and start a fire out there, it's, it's so real. It's so alive. And by our remembering who we are, we're not just celebrating history tonight. By remembering who we are, it is, becomes alive in our hearts as we hear in our scriptures tonight. It becomes alive in our souls. It becomes alive in our daily and ordinary lives. You know, you look at this gospel, and, and we have women going to the tomb. And what that gives us tonight is this beautiful sense of how Jesus saw family. You know, many of us, we say our families are blood relatives. Well, tonight we have a group of women coming to the tomb that knew Jesus. They didn't have to do this. They didn't have to go prepare his body and all that. But they chose to do that because they knew him. And I think it's a beautiful call for us tonight to really ask ourselves in union with Christ with our relationship with him, how do we reach out? 
how do we bring that presence to this world? And maybe, in fact, let, let's move off the world right now. How do we bring his presence or allow his presence to live through us as we gather tonight? How do we allow that to happen when we go home tonight in the car? When we walk into the front door of our house or in the garage and go into our house, how do we allow that to continue? How do we allow him to continue to live through us? Not just on three days, not just on Easter, but on every day. Today we have been given the most amazing gift. Again, the gift of Jesus Christ, the gift of resurrection, the gift of new life. And tonight, you know, the distractions I hope for most of us or all of us, I hope those distractions are very small tonight so that we can really focus, we can really get a sense of the spirit that is leading us tonight. The spirit that is opening us up to hear the voice of Jesus Christ, to know the love of God, to know the presence of the holy in this body of Christ that is gathered here tonight. So again, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for your desire to know one another. Thank you for your desire to know the person of Jesus Christ because it does make a difference. Because tonight we're not just celebrating life and death. We're celebrating life and death and life. Let's stand together. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ. Our Lord, Amen. can I have you hold that? O oh God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of the one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism, May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. And at this time, we'll invite Deacon Joe to put the, water, or the candle into the water three times.
May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as we renew our baptismal promises tonight, again, we will light our candles. So if you'll pull them out at this time. And again, a beautiful reminder of our baptismal promises and being baptized as a child. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so tonight I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. If you'd please extinguish your candles. If you want to put them under your chair tonight, we're going to invite you to come up to the font tonight. So what that is going to look like is we're going to invite you to come up this way like you would for communion. Then the sides, we're going to kind of take you down and around the back. It'll go fairly quick tonight. But again, if you come up and sign yourselves. Uh, for those who are unable to come to the font tonight, we can come around or... You can, uh, if somebody's sitting next to you and their fingers are wet, you can go like this. Amen. So come on up and we'll bring you this way. Yeah. 
Let's stand together as we present our prayers and petitions. For the baptized body of Christ, that we have renewed our baptismal promises, become ever more aware and committed to giving witness to Christ in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the world that God's grace wash over it and heal all ills. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that those who suffer, that they may be transformed by Christ's sacrificial and redemptive love. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our community of faith, that the risen Christ who suffered death out of love for us, renew our parish this Easter and fill us with his spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who thirst for the restful waters of eternal life, especially those from our book of the deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in our hearts and for those from our book of intercessions, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, as we come before you tonight, please hear these prayers and petitions we have offered in your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The altar is prepared.
pray, brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. That on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the bread to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O oh merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
Christ hear us. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one of mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. Around the baptismal font tonight, we have a number of uh, small uh, things of holy water. Please take them with you, as many as you would like. Also, uh, thank you to everyone who had a hand in uh, preparing this liturgy tonight. As you see in the program, I kind of forgot the, the litany of the saints earlier, so we did it a little later. And, <laughs> and the second collection was really the first collection we had. So that, <laughs> But thank you for your, uh, what would I say, uh, flexibility. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and on behalf of all of us here at Holy Spirit, I mean, you have an amazing, holy, and life-giving, not only Easter evening, Easter day, but Easter season. Kindly bow your heads for the blessing. If you please respond amen after each invocation. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go.